Don't worry, Megan will wash her hands again. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. This is our first of our new show. We decided to kind of organize our channel differently. You probably noticed already because this video is a new intro, but it's called Cooking for Our Crowd. We've done a lot of cooking videos in the past, but usually they're involved with vlogs and we decided to kind of pull those apart just because I know it's easier if I just want to watch somebody do something and learn how to do it. Um, I don't necessarily want to watch all of the other things around it. And I just thought it'd be fun just to have videos dedicated to topics. And today I'm going to show you how to make homemade pasta and homemade pesto. And I'm going to do it as all of these videos for a crowd because we have nine kids. So we're always cooking for a crowd. Um, first step, I take off my wedding ring. I don't lose it <laughs> just because this, I'm going to be using my hands a lot for this. Um, I'm making a really basic egg pasta. You can make pasta with just flour and water, but this is an egg pasta recipe. It's super yummy. It can be made with just a little bit of butter and salt, a little bit of garlic. That's, it can be a highly delicious side. Um, and it's not as hard as you think. Now, one thing I do have, I'm gonna use my hands for a lot of it, but I do have a pasta machine, which I'll show you later. They're not very expensive on Amazon, but they're really helpful. And they even help refine your pasta a little bit further. Um, it's, it's a lot easier than rolling it out by hand. That's possible, but if you're gonna do it more than a few times, then just go ahead and get yourself one of those. Because we're always cooking for, we have a crowd. So there will always be people around in our videos. I keep my flour in a bucket. When I buy it in, at like Costco, I put it in here. We go through the flour really quickly. So it, it's not a big deal doing this. Um, we're going to start with four cups of flour. Just regular old unbleached flour. To that four cups of flour, I added, just missed it, added a teaspoon of salt. Teaspoon of kosher salt. And I just mix it in with my clean hands. It's kind of fun. You get to play around the flour the way that your kids always want to. And then um, what I'm going to do is make a little well. So come and take a look. To my four cups of flour, I'm adding five eggs. I wish these were homegrown eggs, but they're not. These eggs are a little bit smaller. Some people do a ratio of just the same amount of eggs to flour, but these are a little smaller, so I did one more egg. And some people will mix their eggs before they put them in here, but I think I can do that just fine in my little flour well, and I'll show you how. This is where your hands are gonna get kind of gross, but it's kind of fun. Just kind of break up my eggs in here. You can add a little bit of water, like a tablespoon, or you can add a tablespoon of olive oil, but I don't think, I'll, we'll see if I need to, because I um, already added an extra egg they were a little smaller. So I'm just gonna mix this by hand until it starts to come together. It's kind of squeezing the dough. It's almost like a pre-kneading. And then you can actually start kneading it. And I am still, you can see it's a little dry. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil. You can use water once again to help it come together. I just spent a full minute looking through that drawer for the tablespoon. <laughs> They're supposed to be in here. But. Okay, uh, you know. with my scraggy hands, I don't know if that's a is word. Is that a word, scraggy? I don't know. I'm going to just drizzle that over. And I'm going to just start kneading it like this. And don't worry, like, you are going to be adding more flour later. It's not an exact science. Sometimes the humidity in your house is low. Sometimes it's high. Sometimes your flour is a little older, so it's a little drier. And sometimes your egg size is different. So don't worry too much. Just start kneading it into the sides of the bowl until it comes together. This is where you get to do all sorts of fun tactile things. You gotta kind of break apart the moisture. You can also just do this in like a mixer. But where's the fun in that? Oh Makes you feel so domestic, you know? <laughs> like you're connecting with your grandmothers and great grandmothers and Great great grandmothers and Who great knows? great great grandmothers. When was pasta invented? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Put it on the screen right now, Elijah.
I ended up adding about a quarter cup of water to this, even with the tablespoon of olive oil I added, but I'm not too worried about it. And you can see it's come together and I'm just kneading it and it will just keep coming together until it's a lot more smooth. And it also activate the proteins mm. in the dough and make it more elastic. So you have that good chew, but also so will the, um, our pasta machine, but we're gonna just knead this till it's a little more smooth and I'll show you then and, and then we'll get to that point. Wanna see you in my cooking, buddy? He you came right over. Here when Casper always wants to see what's being made. Yep, I'm making some pasta, you wanna see? Mmm, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't usually wanna eat it. Now, this is where I get it to. It's not the same as bread dough. It's not gonna be as soft and elastic and pretty, you know, as bread dough. But it's come together, and I'm gonna put it in here, and one of the biggest secrets is, is letting it rest. I didn't used to do that, because I was always in a hurry. But I let it rest for at least 20 minutes. I wet a paper towel and put it over there, or you can just use just a kitchen towel and put it over there so that it doesn't dry out too much, because it's prone to do that. Mm. You want a little piece of this dough? No, maybe not. Don't worry, Megan will wash your hands again. <laughs> All right, while the pasta rests inside, it's a good chance for us to come outside to our little garden and get our basil. And I'm gonna show you how to cut basil. Basil actually isn't unhappy when it's cut. It actually helps it, you know, grow some more. But there's just one little trick. If you come and look, you see how there, it grows in sections. There's nothing and then it goes up to the next one. You wanna cut down to the grouping before. So if I were to cut here, right above that grouping, hmm. if I'm gonna do this one, I'm gonna go right down to there. Also, you always wanna make sure that you don't let it flower. If little flowers are forming, I'll show you over here. See these flowers? We wanna definitely get those out because once those if it goes all the way to flower, then it'll just start producing seed and it'll stop growing. So make sure you do that. I am gonna need four cups of basil leaves that are compressed. So that's gonna be filling this bowl to make pesto enough for my family. So actually, I only need two cups because tonight we're making, um, we're not putting on the pasta. We're actually putting on some chicken that we're gonna roast. So right. I don't need quite as much. Okay. okay. I have my two cups about of my basil. It is a heat wave this week, so hot. Not necessarily good for us, but great for the plants as long as we can keep them watered. So everything's looked good. We got tomatoes growing like crazy, peppers, um, squash, cucumbers. It's been an awesome harvest so far. Okay, even though I don't use chemicals in the garden, um, there are little bugs and pests. And so I just put my basil in a bath of cold water and just make sure and get anything off. Like this little thing. Can come out? A little bug. Oops. You can see I have the pasta resting with the damp towel. And we're going to, we have our two cups of basil leaves. Now, you can use the stems. The only stems I wouldn't use are these really hard ones. It's like so rigid. Mm. But you see these stems are super soft. Yeah. So you don't want to have to worry about those hard ones. So I'm going to have two cups packed. Um, basil leaves or soft stems. Also, um, I'm gonna have two garlic cloves. You can use pine nuts, but those are like so expensive right now. So I'm gonna use the walnuts instead. And I use about a quarter cup of those. So walnut is an acceptable substitution? Mm -hmm. That's, okay. I've always, like I bought pine nuts a couple of times for my pesto, but, and it is very fine and creamy, but I think we saw they were like, it was crazy expensive, like thirty dollars. Yeah, think, really expensive at home. Costco. Um, and then I'm going to use two thirds a cup of olive oil and um, half a cup or so of this Parmesan. You don't want the grated Parmesan, you or the shredded. You want grated, so it's really small. And oh. this brand is from Costco, and it's delish. And you can also add a little black pepper. The other thing that I've discovered, I have made this in the blender since time immemorial no but i my last batch i finally used my pester pestle mortar mortar 
<laughs> Mordor. <laughs> my pestle and Mordor. <laughs> I know so much about cooking. My mortar and pestle that I got for Mother's Day, what, like a couple years ago, a few years ago. Yeah, it's been a while. But it was so much more flavorful because when you're putting it in the blender, now this is crazy, but the blender's not crushing, it's slicing. Even if the slices are really small, and the basil, its flavor comes from the essential oil that's on it. Mm. And those essential oils will break where it's been cut, but in, they'll stay intact in other places and they're very small, microscopic, right. really. Uh, but when you make it in your mortar and pestle, you're releasing all of those. So it becomes really aromatic in here and it becomes really yummy. It's probably not super practical unless once again, you feel like being domestic because it takes about 10 to 15 minutes of hard oh, labor, right. yeah. but in your blender, it's like one minute, you know? So I'll show you how it works. You can do this with a knife, but I just use it with my hands too. And I just do little twists so I hear that pop. And then my, the skins come off really easily. I'm gonna first do my salt and my garlic in here to get that down to a nice paste. I'm gonna start here and just add that in. You know what, it made me want to use this even more. Mike and I went, took our son Daniel on a, a senior trip to Mexico and we took a cooking class there from like a local mom and she had us use a mortar and pestle with the salsa and I'm like, okay, it's not just like ancient, mm -hmm. it's still used and it, and it works so well. And so I've got my, my garlic, if you want to take a look in here, down to like paste. That smells pretty good. It smells really good. And then I'm going to add my basil. Another thing is I love big beautiful basil leaf but I didn't know till recently that the smaller the leaf the more flavorful oh look I just got a little bug off there <laughs> really maybe not the piece of garlic from your hands it might have been mm -hmm. but the smaller the leaf those are have the most potent flavor so mm. keep that in mind if you want to make when you're like throwing some basil in with some pasta some fresh basil or on a pizza uh -huh. small leaves pack a punch next I'm going to add a fourth a cup of walnuts just gonna pound and grind those down into a, like a mealy paste. This smells so good. Now I'm gonna add my leaves a little bit at a time just so it stays manageable. And I'm just gonna kind of pound those down the same way I did everything else. You can smell it, breaking those oil sacs. Mm. <laughs> sweaty that was some hard work you know i don't know maybe you guys can tell me at home because i'm still so new to mortar and pesto but my pesto is usually really bright green and i'm wondering if it has to do with you know when it's just sliced versus crushed mm. or it's actually the color of my mortar effect like interacting with the basil mm. i don't know but now i'm gonna add a half a cup of olive oil how long how long did that take you to get that i don't know how long do you think Maybe five, five to ten minutes. Yeah. It did take five. a little while. Longer than a blender, for sure. And then you can add anywhere from a third, of a, a fourth of a cup to a third of a cup. I'm going to do a heaping fourth. If you were gonna make this with your pasta, set it aside, and then when your pasta is done cooking, reserve some of the water, the hot water, and add it to your pesto, and it'll like kind of melt that cheese a little bit, make it really creamy, and then I guess people call it emulsify it, and then it'll spread really well when you put it on your pasta. But since we are actually using it like a marinade, we won't be doing that. Obviously, when cleaning your mortar and your pestle, you don't want to use like harsh chemicals. You just want to rinse it out with water as much as possible and wipe it out so you don't have any flavors. 
Yama. It smells really good. Totally. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Super good. I have the water going. I have the chicken uh, in. Chicken in the oven. We have a little bit of pesto left, so I will be using it. Ooh. So then I'm just gonna take, see how this is much more elastic now. Take a little bit of pasta dough. You're gonna be using a lot of flour. This is the secret to it, not sticking to your pasta machine. Now obviously if you didn't have a pasta machine, this would be the point where you would just roll it out as thin as you could get it mm -hmm. and cut it up. But this pasta machine is like $25 on Amazon. It's, we'll put a it link down below. It is $25? Mm-hmm, wow. I looked. We'll put a link down below. Um, For reels, we will. Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start at its widest, which is on here is a seven. So there's like this adjustment knob over and here. And you're it not make, brings these this. closer and further apart. So we're gonna start as far apart as possible. Flour. Oh boy. And then we have this and we're gonna fold it over on itself. Put in some flour again. More flour, okay. You adjust it to be a little bit better. Nope, still yeah. on the same one. Okay. I like to do that a few times because it it kind of helps to the final like kneading of mm. it, refining. You just get a better product when I do that. Okay, you can see the thickness of this noodle. If you wanted to have some really thick like noodles, like you were making um, some uh, Japanese um, ramen, mm. you know, that would be kind of cool. Stick with that. But, I haven't actually decided what I'm doing yet. We've got, this cutter comes with a, pretty much a fettuccine and a spaghetti. That's your two options. Yeah, your two options. I could roll this, you can get other attachments because this just fits in like this. All right. Love this thing though. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it a little bit thinner. So you're just gonna work down gradually. Okay. And I'm gonna do Peter's it on interested. five. You guys want thick noodles? Sure. He doesn't know. Okay. Sure. Thick. Thick noodles okay, everybody? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll do some fettuccine. Really important that you use flour at this part because otherwise it'll stick together and it won't maybe be stuck immediately. But I've got this Mars Rover here that Daniel gave me because I didn't have a drying rack. Um, in the past I have, Perfect. but I had, didn't have one. So like Mother's Day. Yeah. Um, as it sits there, they start to stick to each other. So you want to make sure it's well floured. Here it comes. It's like when you used to have Play-Doh when you were a kid. I know, it's so fun. That's why I, you can totally do this without a pasta machine. Come on, this is fun. And then you want to kind of separate them. Like I said, they will kind of grab onto each other. And hang them on here. We're making fresh pasta. We're not drying our pasta. I, you, you can let it dry and then it's more like... I don't know if you'd need a dehydrator or yeah. if you'd have to dry it in the sun. I've never... We've never done that. We've always made I think the, what's so yummy about homemade pasta is it's fresh. Right. You could obviously just use the sheets and make like homemade raviolis or mm. tortellini. Oh, wow. Yeah, or lasagna, I guess. Mm. That would be yummy. Okay, so same thing. I'm just gonna go... Over and over again. Yep. Fill this thing up. Here the water's getting hotter, and then we're gonna cook it for five minutes or so. Just I actually don't know how long I cook it. I just cook it until it looks right. separate them and you want to just make sure you have enough water that they're not they can move around they need space social distancing in the pot oh. is it hot it's really hot baby okay. Okay. Mm. 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 these are gonna be fat noodles yum 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 we've got pesto Chicken in the oven, it smells super good in here. And mm -hmm. then going to toss the rest of the pesto. Uh, maybe 
with some butter with the uh, noodles. It'll be super yummy together. Obviously, this isn't like your super fast dinner night, nope. but sometimes, especially when the world is weird, it's nice to slow down and make something from scratch. It just, at least for me, it helps me kind of calm down and be, feel a little bit more grounded, especially when I'm, you know, just able to try to do it by myself and um, it's kind of meditative. No, I don't mind the kids helping, but the kids are when I'm trying to like totally. explain what I'm doing, I do get a little bit more flustered, but. So. Yeah, so how long should that stay in there? Um, I just, I don't even know, like five minutes, seven minutes, depends on the thickness of your noodle. Um, I just kind of check until they're the right, like just chew. Okay. And I think the chicken's done, we gotta get it out. Yeah. Oh, that's not super pretty. We'll call that rustic pesto chicken. Right. Mm. <laughs> Nothing better on a, a scorching hot day. <laughs> <laughs> have a bunch of. I'm just improving my skin. Yes. Yeah, it's good for you. Those look delectable. They're done. The troops have gathered. They can smell the food and they're hungry. We're missing Esther's eating out with friends and Daniel's still at work, so a little bit smaller crowd. Okay. Mom has the initial. It's rustic, cheap, delicious. It'll impress your friends. Oh, that's what's important. And I mean, it's a good time. Okay. Spend more time in the kitchen when you've got the time. And uh, I promise you'll be more relaxed, more grounded, and a little bit more peaceful. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.